On today's episode, we're gonna take an in-depth tour of our additive manufacturing facility here in Northern Colorado. Hi, I'm Connor. I'm a mechanical engineer here at Avid Product Development. We are a 3D printing service bureau in Northern Colorado. We specialize in design, prototyping, and manufacturing using additive manufacturing technology. Today, we're gonna to take a look at our printing and post-processing options. Then we're gonna to go to the engineering lab where we do a testing and assembly. So this is the main production floor. This is where we do all of our 3D printing and all of our, almost all of our post-processing. Over here, we have all seven of the HP MJF printers. Starting here at the end, we have our 5620 Pro, and we have four of the 5210s, and then we have two 4210s. So here we have uh, HP MJF 5620 Pro. So this is a powder bed fusion system. Rather than a filament, which is basically like a hot glue gun on a gantry, this uses powder to build your parts. HP is taking their 2D printing technology, and rather than printing onto a piece of paper, they're printing onto a very fine layer of powder, about three thousandths of an inch thick. Inside the printer here, we have uh, the carriage, which has fusing lamps and the print heads under here. On the top, we have our heat lamps, and then back here, we have a recoder. All of these systems work together to basically keep the powder a few degrees below melting temperature, and then the carriage prints those chemicals onto the layer of powder and fuses it using the fusing lamps under here. After one layer of powder has been finished, the recoder comes, spreads a new layer of powder, and the process begins again. Layer after layer, you build your part, and then after about 12 to 14 hours, you're done with your print, and you can pull the build unit out and take that to the processing station. So this is a build unit. This is what contains all of the powder and does all of the powder handling for the machine. Underneath the build plate here, this entire volume is full of powder. And after every layer, there's two screws on either side that bring that powder up to the top. These veins spread that across and then the machine spreads the powder across the entire uh, area here. So this is a HP multi-jet fusion processing station. This is where we basically remove all of the unfused powder from the build. So after the build is done, we roll the build unit into this machine. From there, there's a vacuum hose that we'll use to basically pull up or suck up all of that unfused media. So this is a great example of what a build looks like before it's unpacked. This is only a half height build. Full height build will be about twice as tall as this. But you can see as I'm vacuuming, the machine is reclaiming the unfused powder. And basically we're uncovering the parts as we vacuum up the old powder. The material itself can be kind of clumpy, but it's very easy to break up. And then at that point it is sucked up through the hose and into a barrel on the side for reuse later. One of the awesome things about this processing station and with the whole HP system in general is that we're able to reuse what is basically the support material. Since all of the parts are in a basically cube of powder, all of that powder is acting as the support material. So as we're sucking up that material, we're basically sucking up the support material. And then that is all able to be reused. One of the advantages of having a print with no support material is that we have a totally uniform surface finish over the entire part. There's no you know, bumps over here or an awkwardly smooth surface over here. It looks the same across an entire part, even on complex surface geometry. Another advantage of the powder being used as the support material is that there's no cleanup afterwards for the technicians. All they do is suck up the extra powder and the parts are ready to go into further processing. This allows us to have a much better value for these parts than other technologies. After we're done unpacking the build, the build unit surfaces will be cleaned. All the extra material, all the powder will be removed as well as possible. Now that these parts are processed, the other function of the processing station is to refill the build unit for the next build. The build unit is refilled with a mixture of the recycled material that we just sucked up and virgin material. This helps us to maintain stable mechanical properties over many builds. So here we have our automated unpacking station. So rather than doing the manual process you saw earlier where we vacuum up the powder and pull those parts out by hand, this machine does all of that automatically. Basically, the build is pushed up into a box called a natural cooling unit. That natural cooling unit can sit on the shelf and cool naturally. After it's cooled, that unit will be pulled from the shelf and placed on top of this chamber right here. At which point, the build will be lowered down into the chamber and this huge minion air tank behind me um, is emptied into the chamber. That blasts all of the air 
and reclaims the powder into the drums here on the side. These drums are then moved over to the processing station where they can be reused to build or to fill the next build. So after this machine is done with its cycle, the parts will come out right here, dropped into this bucket, and then they'll go into bead blast, just like all of the other parts for final processing. This is the Dimension PowerShot C. This is an automated piece of blasting equipment. We use this to remove all of the extra powder that I couldn't get off at the processing station. This machine works by placing your parts into the drum here. Once all the parts are in here, this drum will slowly rotate and blast nozzles on the other side will remove all of the extra powder. So in this room, we also have our PowerShot Dual and we have two manual blast cabinets down at the end. The PowerShot Dual allows us to use multiple medias within the same cycle. So we can start with a glass bead that removes all of the extra powder and then finish it up with a, uh, it's like a small plastic bead that allows us to surface the part. So it decreases the surface roughness and gives you a more kind of finished looking part. So here we have a downdraft table. This is just for some fine detail work. Sometimes deep holes or deep lined holes can be very difficult to blast clean. So we will clean those by hand with uh, either you know, small drill bits or uh, some of the brushes you see over here. And down here at the end, we have our two manual blast cabinets. This allows us to use um, other kind of specialty media if we need to. For example, on the left, we always keep it with glass bead as our standard day-to-day -day media. And then on the right side, we have uh, aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide is what we use before we do any Cerakote or any uh, final post-processing on parts. So this is our vapor smoothing room. We have three machines in here. We have our PostPo 3D, the SFX, and the SF50. This gives us three different options when trying to vapor smooth parts. You know, different thickness of parts, different part geometry has different characteristics for the smoothing process. Um, PostPro 3D, great high volume production machine versus the SFX, which is a great prototyping machine. And then the SF50 with Pure here allows us to do uh, TPU and other more complex materials. So all of these machines work by putting your parts into the chamber here. And all three of these machines have different chamber sizes. Your parts go into the chamber and the machine basically evaporates the solvent, which is then forced into the chamber and then it settles onto the surface of the part. Once it settles onto the surface of the part, it becomes a liquid again and basically melts the surface of the part, topping the mountains and filling the valleys. So this is our coatings room. This is where we spray a variety of engineered coatings onto 3D printed parts. This allows our customers to get very specific colors or a combination of colors on their parts and provides other added features like a very good UV resistance. We spray a lot of Cerakote. Cerakote is almost completely immune to UV, so it allows these parts to withstand a very harsh environment completely outdoors for a long period of time. We keep a huge variety of Cerakote colors on hand at all times, so we're, out, we're able to turn parts pretty quickly. We also do clear coats and automotive finishes, so we can do a high build primer followed up by um, a true automotive paint, and that basically makes the part look like it was stamped out of metal. So this is the engineering lab. In addition to all of the 3D printing that we do, we also do a light mechanical assembly and some electronic assembly as well. So we're able to take the 3D printed parts that we produce and turn those into a final product that our customers are able to directly sell to their consumer. So this is a big four-in-one filament printer. Inside here, there are four printers and a gantry system that automatically loads and unloads build plates. You can see we're running a production job right now. This gantry here will pull build plates from the left, automatically load them into the printer. The printer will automatically start based on what's in the queue. Then as soon as it's done, the gantry will retrieve that print, put it in the bottom, and load a new build plate, at which point the printers will start with the next part in the queue. Filament printers are great for offering a variety of materials. Those materials can be anything from your standard ABS and PLA to Peak, Altem, very high temperature stuff, and very chemical resistant materials as well. We can do any number of colors, whatever you can find uh, in a filament form, we can print here on this machine. So on the back side of the machine here, we have all of the spools of filament. Each printer can have up to eight different spools. Here we have multiple spools on each printer, and this enables us to print continuously. As soon as one spool runs out, it's able to automatically start the next spool and keep itself running. So we're able to run this machine for days on end without any sort of human interaction. Now let's go check out the mechanical testing room.
So we're in the mechanical testing room, and this is our Mark 10 load frame. In every build, in two different locations, we put a total of three dog bones in X, Y, and Z, and then we test those dog bones in the load frame before the parts from that build leave the building. This helps us make sure that we're delivering consistent mechanical properties from build to build. So one of the most popular post-processing options for our parts is black dye. These two machines here are basically converted uh, washing machines. They use a black RIT dye to take the parts from its natural gray state to black. Black dye is our most economical post-processing option. We do not charge for it. And it really helps take the printed part from kind of a prototype look to a finished product. Another dye system we offer is that I mentioned DM60. You can see the grape or purple parts here. This is a great option for dyeing your parts with color rather than just black. The dimension dye penetrates the part deeper and provides better long-term color stability. One of the big advantages of a dye versus a surface coating is that it's more flexible and stays with the part. As you can see here, on our Lubrizol Estain M88 TPU. So this is our heat insert station. This is a threaded metal insert that is pressed into the part using heat. It's great for fasteners that will be taken out multiple times during the lifespan of the printed part. It's great for prototyping if the part will be assembled and reassembled many times during testing, but it's also great for production parts. The metal fasteners are stronger than just a screw threaded straight into the plastic. So the machine you see here has basically a soldering iron on the end of a spring, and there's a hard stop that allows us to press the insert into the exact same depth every single time. In addition to this equipment, we also have manual soldering irons, and those are great for very complex geometry or for kind of one-off prototypes. We keep a huge selection of heat inserts in stock all the time, so we're able to turn these parts very quickly. In addition to all of our manufacturing, we also do a lot of mechanical engineering. We have a team of engineers that can take everything from a napkin sketch to a finished CAD model and help you optimize that for 3D printing. We can take your CAD model and help optimize it for everything from heat inserts to larger scale mechanical assembly. Our team of engineers can review your CAD file with you and make sure everything assembles as designed. If you have any questions about the processes you saw today, hit us up in the comments below. If you're interested in 3D printing and engineering content, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.